All right, good morning or afternoon again, um, sixth graders. Welcome to day two of distance learning. Uh, because I'm using this as kind of like an ed puzzle, make sure that you're, you, you are using the rewatch feature uh, to go back over anything. I pretty much am going to only ask questions about things I actually say or are on the screen. So uh, using any kind of rewatch feature is going to be to your advantage. Uh, so far, everybody's doing pretty darn good or pretty darn well, sorry, uh, on the um, on the activity. So just keep it up and you'll be fine. All right. So uh, just as a reminder, yesterday we covered uh, some basic definitions that we have been working with atoms, molecules, compounds, elements and density. And today we're going to start building off of that in our look at minerals. All right. The word mineral has a four part definition. Um, and if something fails any one of these four things, it is not considered a mineral. It must meet all four criteria. They are, a mineral must be naturally occurring. It has to be what's called an inorganic solid. It must have a definite chemical composition and it has to have an orderly arrangement of atoms. Um, we're gonna go through all four of these uh, Today, uh, my goal is to get through at least one of them. I've got a stopwatch going to make sure this is around 10 minutes or less. And um, uh, so let's go ahead and start with what it means to be naturally occurring. And uh, again, if a mineral, um, if, if a, a substance does not match all four of these, it, it fails the definition of being a mineral. So min naturally occurring. Basically, this means that it, it happens naturally in nature. Nature will make the substance. Um, it cannot be made in any kind of laboratory or factory or anything like that. Um, a lot of the times uh, we can artificially make the exact same thing, and um, but because it, it was made uh, in a lab or a factory, it is not a mineral. So here's an easy concrete example for you. Diamonds exist in nature. Um, there's a couple of different ways that diamonds can be made. Um, they don't come from coal, they come from carbon. Uh, diamond is just pure carbon in crystalline form and that occurs in nature. So we can um, go to different mines around the planet and dig up diamonds. They were made by nature. Um, the exact same substance, just take diamonds and put it under a lot of heat and pressure. Uh, we have a substance called cubic zirconia. It is the exact same thing as a diamond. It's got the same crystal structure. Uh, it's, got this, it's got the same element in it. Um, everything about it is the same, but a diamond is considered a mineral and a cubic zirconia is considered, well, synthetic, artificially made. And so it is not a mineral. Now, a cubic zirconia will match all three other uh, parts of the definition, but it will fail that first one about being naturally occurring. So uh, minerals must be naturally occurring, made by nature, even if they are the exact same thing. Um, so diamonds and cubic zirconia are chemically the same. They are structurally the same. It's just where they come from is different. And uh, we have gotten uh, as humans very, very good at closing tabs apparently. <laughs> Um, we have got, uh, it wasn't even my cat that time. All right. So, uh, we've gotten very, very good at, uh, making, uh, synthetic or artificial diamonds, um, and other substances as well. So one of these is a diamond. One of them is cubic zirconia. Um, it, basically they will be the exact same thing. They're just pure carbon in crystalline form. And um, one of them is naturally occurring. One of them is not. So that means one of them is a mineral. One of them is not. And for those of you who were trying to guess that's which one it was, now you can't always tell. There will be um, diamonds that uh, will look better than this. And there will be diamonds that look worse than this. And there will be cubic zirconia that looks better than this and cubic zirconia that is, uh, looks worse than this. So you can't just tell by looking. Uh, we have to do other tests as well. You basically have to be a kind of a trained gemologist to do, to do the whole just by looking thing. But point is, is that they are, pre they are exactly the same, just where they come from. There are other minerals uh, that um, are out there that are kind of uh, 
diamond-ish, at least as far as appearance. Um, morganite and moissanite are two of them. Um, because of uh, them being synthetic as opposed to naturally occurring, they have a much lower cost. So if you look at cubic zirconia, a carrot, uh, which we'll get talk about in a minute, is about $20. A carrot of moissanite or morganite can be around $500. The same quality uh, in diamond can be between $3,000 and $5,000. So a uh, very big difference, even though they're the exact same thing. So they're both just pure carbon in crystalline form. They, they have the same crystal structure. Everything about them is the same, except that because this one's naturally occurring and is a mineral, is much more expensive. And cubic zirconia is synthetically made. Same thing, but for way, way cheaper. So let's talk about carrots. So... The word carrot spelled this way, C-A-R-A-T, is actually a unit. Uh, it's a unit of measurement of mass. So it's 200 milligrams or 0 0.2 grams, and it's just a measurement of mass. So when we talk about a five carat diamond or a two carat diamond, all it is is just us putting it on a, something like a triple beam balance, and um, that'll be uh, its mass, and that's what we measure it in, in carats. Carrot, uh, spelled with a K, K-A-R-A-T, is actually a percentage of purity, and you'll see that uh, when it comes to gold. So if we talk about 24 karat gold, um, 24, I, I don't know the reason why, but um, 24 was decided to be like the uh, denominator uh, for uh, purity of gold. So 24 karat gold means that it is 24 out of 24 or 100% gold. Now, the problem with pure gold is that it's not, uh, not very good for jewelry making other than being pretty because it uh, bends and damages very easily. It's, uh, it's got a quality called malleability. It's very bendable. Uh, so a lot of times they will mix gold with other metals that are more firm and sturdy, and that will lower the percentage of uh, gold. It'll lower the purity of gold. So it's going to lower the carat of gold. So something like 14 carat gold uh, is meat basically is uh, 14 out of 24. So if you have a 14 carat uh, gold uh, ring, it is actually only about 58.3% gold. And then the other rest of it will be other metals. And then of course, carrot spelled this way is just something you eat. It's a root vegetable. All right, so here we have different sizes or masses of diamonds. And so when we talk about carats of diamonds, all we are talking about is how much they would be on a triple beam balance. So big question, how can you tell the difference if you're not a trained gemologist and uh, somebody gives you uh, what they're calling a diamond ring or diamond necklace, something like that, uh, either they uh, spent uh, a whole bunch of money on you or they went synthetic on you. Um, so you have to know, do you hug them or do you dump them? And there are a couple of different ways. Uh, so one of the ways is what you kind of see here is to use something called an ultraviolet light or black light. We're going to be using wavelengths of the electromagnetic light spectrum uh, that we uh, our eyes can't see, but can cause what's called illuminescence. Um, in gemstones. So one way to distinguish a cubic zirconia from a diamond is to get a hold of a long wave ultraviolet light. It's also called a black light. Now these black lights, they show purple and that's honestly just to make us feel better like so we can see where we're pointing a black light. In reality, that purple light isn't doing anything uh, to make this glow. It's the ultraviolet light, light that our eyes can't see that are actually causing the diamond uh, to glow here. So if you have a uh, ultraviolet light, diamonds will usually, not always, usually glow blue and cubic zirconia will always glow kind of a mustard yellow color. Uh, so, um, and if you get something like, you know, just cut polished glass, it's not going to glow at all. So that's kind of one way to um, uh, tell the difference. Um, it's just to go ahead and get a black light. So... Story time. I'm running into my 10 minutes, but it's a good story, so let's go ahead and do that. All right. 
So years and years and years ago, I taught this unit and I actually used to teach it like around the second or third quarter. So around the fourth quarter, I was out in the hallway like I usually am uh, in the morning as students were coming off of the buses and there was a sad kid uh, who came up. So I, uh, he looked like he had a really, really rough night. So I pulled him aside um, and I said, hey, what's going on? He said, uh, my parents were in a huge fight last night and it was kind of my fault. I said, oh, really? What'd you do? He said, well, every week, uh, once a week, we have what's called family night. And we take turns uh, to see uh, who's gonna, what, what the family's activity is going to be. And this week, uh, or was last night, was family night, and I picked us to go bowling. And so we went bowling, and everything was going fine uh, until uh, at around 8 o'clock or whatever time it was, the uh, they bowling alley switched off all the lights and they went to glow bowl well with glow bowling uh as you can see, you probably tell where the story is going uh, the, uh there was ultraviolet lights making everything's kind of floss for phosphoresce words are hard so um i looked over and my mom's ring was glowing bright yellow and i said hey mom you've got a cubic zirconia and she said no Dad bought me a diamond. This is a diamond. And the kid said, no, Mr. Bogdan said, and then proceeded to explain the story. So it turns out that dad uh, took the money that was supposed to be spent on the big fancy uh, diamond wedding ring and spent that money on himself and went and got a synthetic cubic zirconia diamond, but told the mom that it was a real diamond all along. And for 15 years, had she was been, she had thought that she had a real diamond ring, but in reality, she had a cubic zirconia synthetic ring. So major fight in the bowling alley, family night was ruined, and here we are. <laughs> All right. Um, later on, we're going to be looking at the different properties of minerals. And one of them is actually something called specific gravity, which is in sixth grade, the equivalent of density. So cubic zirconia, even though it's chemically and structurally the same as a, as a uh, naturally occurring diamond, actually has a higher density. It's got around a uh, 5.95 grams per milliliter, uh, and diamonds only have about a three and a half. So if you've got the right equipment, like what we do in sixth grade, you can actually figure out whether you've got a diamond or cubic zirconia. More on that later on in the unit. Um, all right, so we are going to go ahead and put a pause there because I am running long. Story time will do that, among other things. And we are going to pause there. Wish you all a uh, fantastic uh, day. Keep doing the great work you're doing. Keep going through Google Classroom. A lot of you have been reaching out, asking questions. Uh, I've got this document here where you can ask questions like you would in class. So uh, if you have a question from the day one, you work on it here. If you have a uh, question about today's lesson, distance day learning, uh, distance learning day two, you would ask it here. And then for the third lesson, I'll have a third tab go or third box going. Um, uh, but all of you are doing uh, really, really well. Good job.